Introduction This video is designed to provide you with a basic familiarity of Vectorworks' terminology and core concepts as you learn to use Vectorworks to design, communicate, and document your ideas. In this guide, the term pointer is used throughout the instructions to denote the mouse, trackball, or other device that you use to control your computer's on-screen cursor. We feel that this method gives you more obvious feedback as you become acquainted with the software. Interface Elements Let's begin with a quick description of the interface elements in Vectorworks. Document Window The largest region in the center of the display is the Document Window. The Document Window is tinted with subtle colors to indicate the projection or layer context. For example, the Document Window is cream for a top plan view and a light green for 3D views. You'll see a pure white background for sheet layers. The document window also, optionally, displays various types of coordinate grids, which identify working planes as they are projected in the document window. The print page boundary is shown as a light gray rectangle and can show additional divisions to indicate the tiling will be performed when printing an area that is too small to fit on a single page. Menu bar, view bar, toolbar, and message bar. Immediately above the document window are four horizontal information strips. At the very top is the menu bar, and below that the title bar, which displays the file name of the document window contents. Below these two bars is the view bar, which is the status dashboard of Vectorworks. Always check the view bar to help understand the context of what you're looking at in the document window. The visible controls in the view bar are shown with a check mark in the list of view bar elements under the small arrow in the rightmost portion of the view bar. You can customize what is shown in the view bar with this list, but for now we'll leave it alone. Below the view bar is the toolbar. Whenever a tool is selected, the toolbar offers mode buttons that control how the active tool will work. In addition, check for instructions to the right of the mode buttons which explain what to do before each step as you use the tool. Framing the document window vertically to the left and horizontally below the toolbar are rulers to help you understand the size of the area displayed in the document window as you zoom and pan about within that window. Across the bottom of the document window is a gray strip where general help appears to the left and the coordinates of the cursor to the right. Watch the right part of this bar for minor alerts in red and the progress bar to estimate the time remaining during long operations such as rendering and importing. Tool hotkeys, menu shortcuts. Tool hotkeys are listed in the tool tip that appears when you position the cursor over any tool with the pointer. A hotkey in Vectorworks is one or more keys without the command key, Mac, or control key, Windows, for the modifier. For example, to activate the rectangle tool, simply press the 4 key. To activate the selection tool, press the X key. This is the 4 key in the row of numbers across the top of the keyboard, not the 4 in the numeric keypad if you have one. Menu shortcuts are listed across from the menu name each time you issue a command in the menu bar. Menu shortcuts are similar to the tool hotkeys in that their purpose is to invoke menu commands without moving the pointer. You can use the tool hotkeys and menu shortcuts interchangeably with the pointer methods described in this guide. Many hardcore users incorporate the menu shortcuts and tool hotkeys at some point along the way, once they're more familiar with the software. Either way, or a mixture of it at each method, can be best for you. The results are identical. The complete list of all the shipping tool hotkeys and menu shortcuts can be found in the user guide located in the Vectorworks help menu. Workspace. The general look of the controls around the document window is determined by the workspace. In Vectorworks, a workspace is an arrangement of tools, menus, and perhaps most importantly, the customizable shortcuts and hotkeys assigned to select menus, tools, and certain other functionality. For some users, using the keyboard more can streamline many tasks. You can customize your workspace with the workspace editor, so you can adapt parts of Vectorworks' interface to suit you. We'll be using the shipping workspace throughout this guide, however, 
so please don't change it at this time. It's worth noting that the shipping workspaces have been developed over time and have given a substantial amount of thought by the folks who are intimately familiar with the use of the software. Therefore, you might want to continue using your workspace for a while to discover the logic behind its layout. If you're coming to Vectorworks after using other software, you'll find that, while the result you expect from other products is identical, ideally the way you use Vectorworks to achieve this result is substantially different. This is because Vectorworks, as with any software, presents a unique user model. This makes applying the approach of other software inefficient at best. A classic notion is to come to Vectorworks expecting to use the methods learned on other systems. So bring your high expectations, but make sure you leave your old methods behind while you get up to speed in Vectorworks. The illustration is a screenshot of the Vectorworks interface. To the far left are the tool palettes, where you'll see rows of tool icons. All those little tool icons can be intimidating when you're first starting out, but we'll get you up to speed in short order. At the top is the basic tool palette. This is the palette we'll be using mostly at first. Notice the black arrow in the upper left of the basic tool palette, which when you click on it, makes the cursor look like a normal system cursor. This is the selection tool. Vectorworks always has a tool selected, even if it is the selection tool. The modes of the selected tool will be visible in the toolbar. Below the basic palette is a special palette called Tool Sets, which is a palette of palettes organized by task. We'll visit this palette occasionally in the exercises. Which palettes and tools that you see here depend on which Vectorworks product is installed. To the right of the drawing window is the Object Info palette. This palette reports the parameters, such as the size or location of the selected objects. You can edit the parameters of a selected object with the Object Info palette as well, which causes the selected objects to adjust according to the new values. Below the Object Info palette in the lower right corner of the display is the Navigation palette. They're tabs representing the different organizational structures that Vectorworks offers. You'll use these to give graphic, logical, and geometric meanings to the object in your project. Imbuing your projects with enough structure, but not too much, makes the job of adjusting the presentation of the project much easier, especially late in the design process. Preferences In Vectorworks, you can use a category of preferences called Vectorworks Preferences to change the way the program interacts with you. In fact, many of the settings are used to let Vectorworks work the way it used to work in previous versions. It's worth noting that the shipping preference set has been developed over time and has been given a substantial amount of thought by folks who are intimately familiar with the software. So, you may consider using most preferences the way they're installed, at least for a while, to take advantage of this collective experience. Nevertheless, these preferences are provided so that you can adjust them if you prefer. All Vectorworks preferences apply to your account on a specific machine. Vectorworks writes separate preference sets for each account on the same machine. Another category of preferences is document preferences that apply to individual files. This preference set has items that you may need to adjust so that certain special purpose files behave appropriately. Once you've identified the need for any of these preferences, you can make a template or stationary file with any document preferences, which opens a copy of the template with the document preferences already applied. Common Computer Conventions in Vectorworks Many conventions common to most software are found in Vectorworks. As in word processors, email clients, and spreadsheets everywhere, these functions work as expected in Vectorworks as well. Delete. Select an object and press the backspace or delete key. Undo. If you make a mistake, choose Edit, Undo. Copy, Cut, Paste. All of these conventions are present and work in Vectorworks in a familiar, reassuring way. Common CAD Concepts. Selection. Use the Selection tool to select objects, to move and resize objects in any view, and to insert objects in or next to a wall. From the basic tool palette, select the Selection tool. Move the cursor into the document window and click on an edge of an object. While you're puttering about in the document window, each time the cursor crosses the edge of a selectable object, pre-selection highlighting indicates any objects that would be selected. To deselect or select more than one object at a time, click the pointer while holding the shift key down. An additional method, marquee selection, allows you to select any number of objects within the region on the screen. 
press Option on a Macintosh or Alt on Windows while dragging with the pointer button depressed. This will toggle the selection state of all objects that are within the region or that intersect the marquee. Container Objects Container objects make creating or editing some types of representations more flexible because the simpler defining definitions that comprise the container are stored as part of or within the container. The benefit of the container concept is that you can revise or later replace simple defining objects inside the container without having to rebuild the object represented by the container from scratch. So, container objects store easy to edit objects as parameters that can be used to redefine or refine the container at any time. For example, to make a curb around a patio, you might imagine creating straight lengths of stock and somehow mitering the strips to each bend. Following a curve presents a challenge, as does the prospect of making a change later to the shape of the patio. Instead, a container object called extrude along path can be used to store a path representing the shape that a curb follows and a profile, which is a planar object in the form of a section through the curb. The extrude along path container object uses definitions to compute how the section looks as it follows the path. At any time later, you can access either the path or the profile independently to greatly simplify making design changes that the container will subsequently use. This concept is incorporated into all sorts of objects in Vectorworks. And once you become familiar with the behavior of one type of container object, you'll know what to expect whenever you encounter other types. Hybrid objects. When working in Vectorworks, it's usually desirable to use hybrid objects because their properties make them able to have schematic graphic properties and realistic fully detailed properties. Hybrid objects combine the properties of 2D and 3D and are created with separate definitions for how they look in a plan view and how they look in other projections. When viewed in 2D plans, the schematic representation of the object is seen. When viewed in perspective or in another view such as an isometric projection, only the 3D portion is seen. Anyone using Vectorworks to show clients pre-visualizations and later fabricators how to build those designs can benefit from using hybrid objects. Information Modeling In Vectorworks, information modeling is a process that enables designers to model a project that provides data to fully support the sharing of building model geometry and customizable data, such as pricing and materials with all parties involved in a building's life cycle. This is in addition to conventional 2D plan representations of traditional drafting systems. Using the information model process involves employing Vectorworks' as hybrid and container objects as well as resource and referencing features to eliminate repeating model components. Using an information model process also involves employing Vectorworks' as standardized structured hierarchy features so that the project can be understood, shared, and coordinated by stakeholders and represented to each other throughout the design, construction, and life cycle. Stacking order. As objects are drawn, the program keeps track of their stacking order within the design layer. The first object created is at the back of the stack, and the most recent object created is at the front of the stack. The send command changes the stacking order of objects within a layer. Objects can be sent forward to be in front of an overlapping object, or sent backwards to be behind an overlapping object. Also, objects can be sent all the way to the front or back in the stack in one step. Although this applies to all objects, the stacking effect is only seen when the projection is top plan, and only with planar objects having a fill attribute other than none. Nevertheless, this feature is used to great effect throughout the design process to construct, create, and edit figures for details, plan projections, and viewport annotations. Working, Automatic, and Layer Planes in Vectorworks, when manipulating objects in space, snap points of existing 3D objects will always override the other alignment and positioning mechanisms described here. This is desirable most of the time, so this is the default. Otherwise, Vectorworks requires a plane in space so that clicking the flat display can be calculated to intersect somewhere before infinity. Therefore, all object creation, editing, and moving is aligned to a working plane. 
A working plane is an elevation of any height on a plane of three points at any orientation defined by the user. Often, the user will define a working plane to make aligning and positioning tasks easier and more accurate. If the user does not explicitly define a working plane, then the location of the working plane defaults to that of the active layer plane. Every Vectorworks layer has a horizontal plane and an elevation associated with it that you can set relative to the internal fixed plane known as the ground plane. The ground plane is a fixed horizontal plane with its origin at the center of the drawing space and at the level of the printed paper. Ultimately, the ground plane is the first consideration for how the location of any point is listed. There are several functions that can affect this behavior, however. Objects and layers with an offset to the ground plane report their height relative to their layer plane, whether or not the layer plane is offset from the ground plane. So, when not defined by you, the working plane defaults to the active layer plane, which may be zero when the working plane is called the ground plane. As you're working in Vectorworks, you may want an object to respond to a working plane that is not horizontal or defined by any other saved planes. For example, you may want to align solar panels to a sloped roof. In this case, you can define a working plane that is parallel to the roof face, and when it is active, all creation, editing, and movement is observed relative to the active working plane. Once it has been defined, it can be saved and reused later. Working in 3D requires a plane in space so that clicking on the flat display can be calculated to intersect somewhere before infinity. So in summary, all editing and creation in 3D space happens in the working plane. The working plane may be aligned with an active layer plane or the ground plane. Snap points of existing 3D objects always override the working plane. Otherwise, all 3D creation, reshaping, and moving operations will be in an active plane. Working in 3D requires a plane in space, so that clicking on the flat display can be calculated to intersect somewhere before infinity. All 3D tools and most planar tools can dynamically set working planes for the next drawing operation. This makes controlling the working plane very manageable. The screen plane is a legacy concept that continues to have narrowly defined uses, but is not used in everyday modeling workflow. Unified View Integrated Environment the Unified View command accesses a modeling mode to view, snap to, select, and edit objects in multiple design layers within the coordinate system. This mode is active by default to see the entire model and edit multiple objects across layers easily, or to align objects across layers without having to create a viewport or use layer links. While in Unified View, Vectorworks aligns all visible layers in the drawing with the active layer as you navigate in the document window and displays them using the active layer's scale, lighting options, render mode, and Renderworks background. The unified view also provides a unified coordinate system. The Z coordinates of all objects are expressed relative to the active layer plane. Other layers are above or below the active layer, depending on their elevation's relationship to the active layer. The active layer's layer option setting, view layer options, determines whether other layers can be rendered and snapped to, and whether objects on other layers can be selected and modified. For rendering, select show others or gray others. For both rendering and snapping, select show snap others or gray snap others. When Show, Snap, Modify Others is selected, objects on other layers can be selected and modified. Tool Behaviors and Modes There are several features that are offered across all tools that can help you to draft fast and accurately. First off, most tools have a keyboard shortcut that is displayed in the tooltip as you hover over the tool with the pointer. 
Next, once the tool is selected, it is quite useful to either verify or select the desired mode in the toolbar. Mode selection can be done with the pointer or it can be controlled with the universal toolbar shortcut set. Most tool operations are executed with a series of clicks. You'll find instructions in the toolbar to the right of the mode buttons prompting you what to do next. Each click of the cursor in Vectorworks means pressing the pointer button and releasing it. Once the desired tool has been selected and the mode has been chosen, move the cursor onto the drawing area and click while interacting with the objects on the page until the tool operation is finished. Tool Types The number of clicks they require for execution can categorize many tools. The Rectangle tool is an example of two-click or line-based tool. Let's demonstrate the use of this tool. Click once on the Rectangle tool. Click once on the first button in the toolbar, Rectangle Mode, and then move the cursor into the drawing area. Click once, releasing the pointer button and move the cursor down and to the right. As you do this, you'll see several different interface features. The dashed diagonal line indicates the rectangle's length and width. The floating data bar shows the height and the width, labeled X on Mac or Delta X on Windows. Ask for the width and Y on Mac or Delta Y on Windows for the height. A negative value indicates the downward direction for the Y axis and a leftward location for the X axis. Several common features as available as you work with the tools in Vectorworks. At any time during the operation, no matter how many steps you've taken so far, you can press the escape key to cancel the operation. This action, however, is not undoable because the object has not yet been formed. So, Vectorworks makes a distinction between objects that are existing, which you can delete, and objects that haven't been fully formed, which you can escape, but can't undo if you decide to continue. Floating Data Bar Another useful feature is the blue box called the floating data bar that follows the cursor as you work on the screen. It's the blue outline that has data functions which are relevant to the operation. In the case of the rectangle, you'll see an X, and Y, which both give values of the horizontal and vertical direction at any time. You can type the number on the keyboard from the row of numbers across the top of the keyboard to begin editing the first value, which in this case would be the X value. So just pressing 5 key begins entering information into the X field. Any number across the top of the keyboard can be used to enter the data. However, the numeric keypad will not work with the floating data bar as these numbers are designated as shortcuts for displaying the standard views. Once the first field is filled out, pressing the tab key on the keyboard will move the cursor to the next field where you can assign values as well. This is an extremely intuitive and useful method to accurately enter precise values as you draw. Once the value has been entered, you can end by pressing the enter key or by clicking the pointer once and releasing it to finish the drawing operation. After the second click has been completed, the object now exists in a selected state on the drawing and its information is displayed in the object info palette. Location and Rotation Type An example of this type of tool is the Column tool found in the Building Shell toolset. There are two clicks with this tool as well, once it has been selected. Click once on the tool and once in the first button in the toolbar, Standard Insertion Mode. Bring the cursor into the drawing area and you'll see a small cross-shaped figure in dashed lines. Click once to set the location, then make a small circle with the cursor around your first click point and you'll see the dashed figure rotating with the pointer. When the figure is rotated as desired, click a second time to set the rotation. Most of the objects of this type represent a real-world object and the first time the tool such as this is used on a particular project, the Object Properties dialog box appears after the first insertion. 
You can fill out the values here to define the default sizes of the column for subsequent uses. If you're following along, just click the OK button in the Projects Properties dialog box to see the finished column. The column is inserted at the specified location and rotation and is left selected. The properties of the column are displayed in the Object Info palette. As you move the cursor away from the new column, you'll see the dashed outline of another potential column following the cursor and you're ready to begin the location and rotation sequence once again. Single click tools. We'll go over two other types of tool behaviors before moving on. There's a single point tool behavior exemplified by the 2D locus tool from the basic tool palette. The tools icon looks like a small X in the second row. There are no modes for this tool, so there are no buttons in the toolbar. Since this tool is a single click tool, each time you click with the pointer produces a new locus in the drawing. Multi-step tools. The final kind of tool behavior that we'll demonstrate before moving on is the multi-step tool. This type takes an arbitrary number of clicks determined by your needs of the moment. The polygon tool possesses this type of behavior, so we'll select it from the basic tool palette. Click once on the tool, click once on the first button in the toolbar that creates polygons from vertices, and bring the cursor into the drawing. Click once to start and move the mouse away from the start point to see a vertex line segment forming. Each click as you move the cursor away from the point produces another line segment which can be ended by clicking once on the start point or double clicking in white space. We will encounter many opportunities to use these tool behaviors in the exercise. Feel free to take a moment for a bit of practice with a simple point line and multi-step tool examples that will help you incorporate speed, accuracy, and documentation techniques. Feel free to browse through the exercise file or skip ahead to the project. You can always come back to something that you've missed.